ladies for coming. I appreciate, of course, familiar faces and new faces. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I primarily been doing these small masterminds. Ooh, <laughs> maybe about eight years. Um, I started out doing large conferences, like those three day conferences and bringing in all these speakers and doing all these things. And I noticed that the people who were really winning, like that would go out and from their notes and, you know, and, 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 and take steps forward with those people who invested in the VIP day, like that extra special day, like you come before the, the, the conference start or maybe after the conference start. And we have that small little space of this, of this building and networking, connecting and learning and actually really getting what you need for you, which is customized just for Heather, customized just for Linda. Um, versus the stuff they share on stage, which is very general. You get what I'm saying? Like I, like I met you ladies at um, Mary Evans event, I was speaking. And what I was sharing was very general. She wanted me to speak for speakers, but everybody in the room wasn't a speaker. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I invited an invitation. Let me do a brand exam so I can really look at your, ex you know, you, you and what you're doing or come to my event. So, but with this, um, so, I, so I started doing that. I was like, you know what? Forget spending all that money <laughs> and travel and all that stress and all that why don't I just do some small little masterminds so I started renting little hotel rooms and I started renting mansions and then I just started using my house <laughs> see I really look you talking about uh trickling and making it making it easy right all I gotta do is go from my bedroom to the basement <laughs> but um but it, it's so powerful and these three ladies Don, Nicole, and Heather, they've been to one of my masterminds before. It was at my other house. Um, and I know you guys know that power in that, right? There's so much power in it. But this here tonight is really just for me. However, it's for you too, because this is free. I normally charge anywhere from 600 to 2500 for my masterminds for two days, right? Um, and that's okay, because it's really in depth. This is gonna be really in depth as well. So I'm shooting this for content, number one, um, and, but also to address your biggest challenge in your business. You can ask me anything, one question. <laughs> one question and I'm going to share with you some advice you know some tips some techniques or maybe even a resource that you need so it's like a win-win situation here right and we have fun you meet other amazing women that you may eventually do business with grow with referrals I'm big on silent money offline money which is introductions which is referrals which is hey I know somebody that does this I got a real estate attorney for you and she works with investment properties let me give you her number that's the best advertising in the world for me I prefer that it's easier um, and I'm gonna be talking about that. So that's what this is for. So I said, you know what? I'm just gonna do some free master classes. I love being around people. I do. <laughs> I'm a people person. Um, I love it. I love pouring into people and I love energy. So for the next hour or so, I'm gonna just be teaching. So you guys take notes. You're gonna get a lot of value from the content that I'm teaching. Please don't stop me for questions. I just asked you that. When um, I'll ask you for your question. He's going to record your question and then I'll answer your question. And then at the end, we can mingle and, you know, whatever, et cetera. OK, so I'm just going to hop into it because, like I said, we are recording. Um, but um, so it's not like a real mastermind like you three ladies may be used to where I'd be like, stop me anytime. <laughs> right. We just be going. Sometimes we go way off, but it's for somebody. You know what I mean? It's for somebody. Whereas tonight I'm just going to be like teaching so I can just get some really good content. Did you have a question or a bathroom? Yep, it's right there. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so Amari, don't forget to pan around the room. Get them taking notes. OK. Um, so this is, so as I, as you guys may, um, I talk about a lot is silent money. Silent money is one of those things that I have trademarked. Silent money is really just making money that nobody knows about. <laughs> like, for example, I share with you, my daughter at 27, she bought her first investment property. She didn't share it with anybody. She, she learned, she got her education. She got her a mentor. She learned from her parents and she did what she was supposed to do, you know, and it, it didn't need to be publicized. She didn't need to do a whole bunch of stuff, you know, same with her business. She works within a network of people. Right. She don't have to. She don't she don't even like social media. She hasn't been on social media in probably maybe six or seven years. You know what I'm saying? So social media is a great 
platform. I know a lot of big brands and a lot of big businesses have been built from it, but not everybody is building their businesses online. The old school way of doing business still works, and I personally think it will always work. I do use online marketing, of course, because you do want to have a well-positioned online brand. Because if I give somebody her information, say, hey, I got a great attorney, they're going to Google her. Right. So I make sure that my clients are very well positioned online. That includes SEO, that includes um, publications, articles, let's get you on the news, something to where that person will see that other people are interested, are also interested in what you have to say, your knowledge and your expertise, right? However, because it's me, you guys, late, you guys, we are recording y'all. We record, y'all. We record. Um, um, now you got me off track. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, because, but the main thing about silent money that I was talking about with referrals is because it's me and you trust me, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Because of our relationship, you're not, e you're not even going to care. You're, you're not even going to Google her. You're going to just take my word for it. That's why I say silent money is the best money, <laughs> right? It's the best money. And that's why it's so important to build those offline relationships, y'all, um, and build, build that instead of online. Because typically when you meet somebody online or you have a relationship with someone online, you don't really know them. You probably haven't worked with them before. You probably haven't sat in a room with them before. You probably haven't shook their hand before, but you're just, people are just saying, oh yeah, I know a realtor. I know a, a, a life coach. I know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It, it's not as powerful as, hey, you know, Don introduced me like the makeup artist that you, I haven't, I haven't reached out to her again, but you know, it's a different type of situation. So in order though, for me to even refer somebody, you got to have high value. You have to have high equity, which is the same thing. High equity, equity is the the way your brand is perceived in this marketplace. And I know that we can all think about high value brands, Rolls Royce, Louis Vuitton, um, Walmart even is a high value brand, even though they have low cost, it's still a very high value brand. <laughs> um, so th these are these are things that we have to make sure that as we're building our online and offline presence, that we are creating value. And I have a whole book. <laughs> about um, become a high value brand on tips and techniques and tools of what you can do to create and become this high value. And I did it from research, not just theory, not just from my from my own clients, but from people like Tabitha Brown, E.T., um, the guy, Vir the guy who owns Virgin, you know, and how they just built these high value brands and became these success. So I like to use research um, to sh to prove my point. So when you have high equity, that equals high value. You, and then you become highly paid, right? So what is a high value brand and why you should be focused on it? There's three reasons. There's, I'm, I'm gonna share three, but there's hundreds of reasons. Um, number one is opportunities, right? Um, as business owners, as brands, um, and you'll hear me use those interchangeably. And, um, but as a brand, you want to create opportunities. You want your brand to be such high value that opportunities are coming to you. People are just referring you. Doors are opening for you that you didn't even know your, your name is being spoken in rooms that you ain't even walked in. Right. Opportunities. Also longevity. A high value brand is going to be around for a long time. And I know now, you know, especially recently after the pandemic, many brands kind of popped up overnight because many people just didn't have a choice. Right. But a lot of those brands are back to work. But and that's because of the economy, too. <laughs> but it's also because a lot of people were selling this get rich quick. You know, you can make 10K in one month and, you know, you can have a million dollar this and this and that. And all you got to do is take my course. You know what I'm saying? And people fail for the okie doke. Me, myself, and many of you in this room <laughs> have been entrepreneurs a very long time. <laughs> and we know that it, uh, it's not an overnight success. It's 20 years of grinding, working, working smart, building networks, building relationships, studying, getting certified, taking tests, traveling here and there, getting on the flight, coming to Atlanta from Dallas. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand that that's you got you get out what you put in. So a lot of those companies 
a lot of those brands, they back to work, right? They're back to work, which is fine. I ain't against no job, right? Well, yes, I am <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm not a good employee. <laughs> I'll be trying to figure out how I can make my own money. I'll be like, hold on. <laughs> you want me to do what? And how much you going to pay me? You got to be kidding me. <laughs> That's just me, though. But I'm not against anybody working. I do believe when you do have that nine to five, be smart. Be smart. Like sometimes you ain't going to be able to take the vacations. Just sometimes. Unless maybe they work with you and they get it real cheap, I'm sure, right? But <laughs> but there are some sacrifices when you have that job because it does take money to make money at the end of the day. So high value brands, they're around for a long time. They, they, they rocking and rolling. They have their highs and lows, <laughs> but they're able to sustain themselves. And that's the goal as a, as a brand and as a business, to be self-sustainable without having that job income, that nine to five. You know, so that's why you got to have a plan. Um, and then also at the end of the day, high income. Listen, you're going to hear me all the time talk about some money, okay? <laughs> and not that, um, um, you know, money solves everything. But it does. Um, I love money <laughs> for many reasons. Um, number one, nonprofits. I can give more um, of more money. Um, I have a client. Her name is TJ Mercer. She's with Moving Day Mafia, and they move in. Um, I know. I heard about that. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Yeah, uh, but she's originally from Tennessee. Media Mavericks. Shh, I'm recording. I'm recording. <laughs> but she's my client, right? And so she is a nonprofit. That that nonprofit needs money. You get what I'm saying? Because they got to buy supplies and dorm room supplies. And and I say we because I'm on the board. We take care of those students who are um, um, foster children. Um, you know, after 18, they just say you go on about your business, right? And they don't have much, right? And we take care of those kids from freshmen all the way to graduation. Um, and so I can give more. For one, my time, me and my son, we go and we set up the dorm rooms and we, we volunteer. But with money, I have the money to do that. You get what I'm saying? I, I can go. I can take off. I don't have to, you know, clock in or ask somebody. So money is important. Um, I'd rather have it than not. That's just me. So I will talk about money because I know that it takes money to make it at the end of the day. Um, so when you have a high value brand, you actually do make more money. Okay. So my promise to you tonight <laughs> is to share with you guys what are some issues, some frustrations, some concerns, and some desires that entrepreneurs are having now, mainly when it comes to offline. So I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of that. What I want you guys to do is, number one, pay attention. Um, um, determine what your next steps will be because that's important, right? You don't want to come to a master class or a mastermind and just take notes, right? Right. The goal is to take the right notes, get the right information and ask the right questions and then go out and take the right action. That's the most important thing. And that's why I do these things. Um, take copious notes, um, begin working on your plan and then follow up with me. I'm going to send an automated email. It's going to seem like it's coming right from me, <laughs> but that's the power of systems. But for re re respond back to that. I'm going to ask you, what have you done? What action did you take? reply and say girl I ended up doing whatever I share with you all tonight okay that's the most important thing that's what I want so what makes me credible um, I've been an entrepreneur over 25 years so this is not just something that I'm doing this is a part this is who I am you know they say it's not on you but it's in you and entrepreneurship is definitely in me because I've been an entrepreneur since I was six well, not really, but to me, <laughs> because um, I was selling my Barbie dolls. <laughs> Any way I can make some money, I'm trying to make some money. <laughs> um, I went from a 30K a year job, uh, went to Howard University, graduated. And I did that to make my mother, Linda, proud. She really wanted me to go to school and become a teacher. I don't want to be no teacher. Here I am, teacher. <laughs> right? That's why mother's no best, son. <laughs> But I ended up getting a job and I like the job, uh, but it just it wasn't I didn't, it wasn't me. Uh, but I went from that 30K a year. This was in 2004 um, to two multi six figure businesses using my high value brand method. I've reached seven, seven figures in 2020, 2021, 2022 and last year. Um, and I am debt free. 
Uh, my coaching programs stay at capacity. I don't do much coaching now. I do very little coaching. I now do brand management and I have a speaker agency, which is a little more hands on. So I work with my clients at a higher rate, but they get a lot more value. Like now they have a team of people to support them. And a lot of the entrepreneurs I work with, they don't have teams or they have volunteers and volunteers don't work like a paid team, <laughs> you know, um, or an expert team, a team of experts, a team of research, a team of um, sales people, a team of people that's going to get on the phone and make deals for you and close deals for you. It's a, it's a different type of thing. Um, I've already done the work and made all the mistakes to create my dream life so I can share with people to help them avoid some mistakes uh, like if we would have been working together years ago I'd be like okay girl you're doing too much you know what I'm saying let's reel it on back and let's do this right because I've been there too I've been there too um, I've become a global brand and millionaires and celebrities call on me for help which is crazy to me I've been immensely blessed to do what I love each and every day the way that I want to do it. And honestly, that was how I really got into entrepreneurship because I wanted to be at home and homeschool my son, which I did until he went to the, I think, fifth grade. That was important to me, the freedom, right? Just the freedom of that. So I get to do things the way that I want to literally work three hours a day. Um, why I do what I do? I've seen way too many entrepreneurs try and not be where they could be, okay? Not where they could be. And a lot of times, what I find is entrepreneurs don't even know where they could be because we're visionaries, right? All of us in the room, all of you watching, we're entrepreneurs. We got big visions. That's why we have so many ideas. I know my husband get tired of me. Like, you gonna do what? You gonna sell insurance now? You gonna do what? You gonna do travel now? I'm like, yes, we doing, we going to Africa actually in three weeks. Yes, right? You know, it's because we, we're visionary. <laughs> um, but a lot of times, sometimes I can't even see what's possible for me. That's why I have mentors and coaches. So they can see, have you thought about this? You're doing that, but have you thought, or don't do that, or hold on, we're really back. You know, like we need those people. Sometimes it can be a good friend, right? A good colleague, a mentor, a coach, a spouse, somebody, right? Even our children sometimes. <laughs> it can, it's got to be somebody. But a lot of times we can't even see where we could be. And that's why I offered you ladies the brand exam. So I can look at what you're doing and see, you know, share with you some, some areas where you can improve upon. Um, I know how doing things right can change your life. Um, I realize how much this type of training is needed because it's not being taught. A lot of people are teaching social media marketing, and I do too, and I, and I do social media marketing. But I also had a, a multi-six-figure business, a, a book publishing company for years that was strictly nothing but 100% referrals, like 100%. I never posted that business online. I never redid the website that I created myself. <laughs> it was, stuff was misspelled. It was horrible. Links wasn't working, but nobody cared because it was, hey, let me introduce you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have dreams to inspire people to be super successful. Um, because I am a black woman and I love black people. <laughs> I love the black culture. Okay. And I like to see us not just being consumers, but the producers. You understand what I'm saying? We, we've been producing since we got here. And even before some of our ancestors were brought here, you know, a lot of us were already here, right? We were explorers, we were already here. But what were we doing? Producing, farming, creating un uh, unity, community. But we got away from that somehow, some way, ego, jealousy, religion, let's be honest, a lot of stuff kind of got us away from that knit community that we have. So I want to see us get back to that part. And everybody can come. <laughs> I get it. I understand. I know it was a lot of people I started with. They're not here no more. Can anybody attest to that? Okay, good. I'm just, I, I know it ain't just me. <laughs> uh, but I did grow up in a dream killer home. Now, not in a negative way, but it was my mother. She was born 1950. So she didn't know no entrepreneurs. It wasn't a thing for her. My mom was go to school, like probably a lot of our mothers and fathers, grandmothers, go to school, get a good job. And work that job and retire and do your thing, right? And that's cool. That worked for my mother. Actually, my mother died when she was 54. And she left me and my brother half million dollars when she died. So she was smart. So you don't have to be an entrepreneur. 
Right. I'm learning that myself. I'm me and my husband like, okay, we're gonna make this investment in this real estate. We're gonna do this. We're gonna invest in stocks. We're gonna be smart with our money because IULs, mm -hmm. cash money, va cash value, life. Right. Like we gotta learn this stuff and utilize it to where it works for us. However, my mama didn't want me to be no entrepreneur because all she thought was failure hard work that's you're not going to be successful but i know for a fact you get that degree you can get you a job so it was tough um um i know what it feels like um to want to be free and release your chains so i want to share with you guys some frustrations that um i'm hearing and researching of what's going on in the marketplace when it comes to making money offline one of them is that people are having difficulty finding high paying clients outside of online platforms for me what i've noticed not just in my own business but i also work with several high level entrepreneurs multi-millionaires people that make way more money than me people who are known throughout the globe for real for real um a lot of athletes a lot of you know celebrities from just starting out to been in business for a long time and i noticed that they make their money offline they are making money from higher paying customers or higher paying deals or higher paying um, partnerships. Right. So like a partnership could be I'm going to I have this entity and we serve this particular client. Right. We serve this group, this tribe of, of people. Right. That have this particular problem. Right. But then there's another company that doesn't do like for example if i sell tires or if i sell rims right and i'm in the rim business like i'm sell custom rims right well there's t there's hundreds of tire stores mm -hmm. in my local community from the little mom and pop mexicans with the little beat up tires you that you got to go to whenever you you know hit one of these potholes in atlanta i'm speaking from experience um to you know costco and the big name right firestone why not form a partnership y'all serving the same people you get what i'm saying that's so much easier than me hopping online trying to sell a, a, some rims to you or you or you they already got use all up coming coming in every single they got email lists they got the, you get what i'm saying and so do i though because i'm also a high value brand my rims are dope my rims, people pay extra for my rims because I'm getting, we doing like custom, like we add an extra flair to what we're doing. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it makes sense. So as I look at the clients that I work with, I'm like, ah, oh, I see. Why? Because they're establishing these partnerships. So that is one of the frustrations that a lot of entrepreneurs who are fairly new or used to online marketing are doing or maybe been an entrepreneur for a long time, but they got away from the partnerships because they got sucked into social media, <laughs> right? Social media is addictive, okay? I could be on there for hours and I'm like, what the heck? Laughing, I'm just laughing. But then there are all these ads popping up and I'm buying neck, because I know I'm going out of town, <laughs> I'm going to South Africa. I'm buying neck thing, I'm buying all kind of stuff. I don't need to be buying, <laughs> right? Um, but so we get sucked into believing that and then also entrepreneurs sometimes we'll see somebody in our field and they're successful online but everybody's not successful online there are so many people who are absolutely struggling online so the goal is to figure out a strategy that works for you and it's going to be different for everybody what i will create for one person is not exactly what I would create for the other. It's the overall idea, right? But you got to look at, okay, let me go home when I leave here today or tonight or tomorrow. We going out. So we ain't doing nothing when we leave here today. Okay? But <laughs> we going to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> but when I leave here, let me go and get me a power list together. Let me write down. Let me look through my Rolodex. People have no idea how much money is in their Rolodex, okay, on their phone. Well, I know Rolodex is old school but phone <sighs> especially you child <laughs> um so you have anybody anybody in this room anybody watching 
you'll be surprised. So periodically I'll reach out to my clients and I'll say, hey, tap into your phone every day this week. Reach out to 10 people and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Do you know anybody who's 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 doing this? So like for me, um, an example is I own a um a speaker agency. So I'll reach out to my girlfriends. I'll reach out to people I know, acquaintances, past clients, even somebody on social media, somebody I met at a conference. Right. And I'll say and I, I have it in my phone. I say, hey, um, does your company bring in speakers to teach on X, Y and Z? You know what I'm saying? And I'll and they're like, yeah, let me introduce you to so and so. But guess what? Who would I follow up with today? And why? And who's here today? Who would I call personally today? You too, right? I called you, right? Yes, okay. <laughs> and so one of you said there is what in the follow-up? One of you. Oh, I oh, that was you. Oh, Lynn, and what did you say? There's what? The follow-up. You said there's something in the follow-up. Favor in the follow-up? You said something, but I was like, oh, that was good. <laughs> um, but, there, but it is fate. Let's use that. There's favor in the follow-up. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, so I'll have them do that. And they're like, girl, I just partnered. We went to lunch. We got on the Zoom. Right. And I tell people when it comes to offline marketing, that's the goal. The goal is to get somebody on the phone. The goal is to get people on a Zoom because you get on a Zoom with me. You buying something. <laughs> <laughs> you buying something. You get what I'm saying? Because now, for one, you're interested because people are busy. You understand what I'm saying? On social media, they just scrolling. They're just scrolling, scrolling, comment, talking, whatever. They're just, but if, I, if you take the time out of your busy day to get on the Zoom with any of y'all or phone call, you, that's that's. It's a little interest there. So now all I have to do is share with you the solution I have to your problem. You're going to be buying something. <laughs> right? now, I, now, we don't want to do that if we're selling a $20 book. You get what I'm saying? But if we're selling a $20,000 workshop to you and your team, oh, we better get on a Zoom. We better spend that little 20 minutes on a Zoom send that invoice or collect that money right there on that zoom that's what i tell my clients to do collect the money right there it's just like when um i tell my clients don't let them leave <laughs> don't let them leave the furniture store think about it when they leave that furniture store they may love the couch oh that couch i love i love that couch. couch is beautiful i love it if they don't buy that couch <laughs> that day when they leave they're not buying that couch they didn't forget unless they came in there for the couch. You get what I'm saying? Right. So don't let them leave the furniture store. Write that down. Don't let them leave the furniture store. Right. Because because um, so that's so anyway. So that's a frustration. So I always like to dive super deep into those strategies. You know, did that help anybody? Gave you a little something to think about. OK. How many? OK. So go ahead and hit stop. And then we're rolling. So another frustration that people are having when it comes to silent money and making money offline is they're struggling to network effectively offline. And I believe, again, it goes back to people have been sucked into social media that we've become comfortable with not being in people's presence. And the pandemic really put a damper on that for us as well. But I always say there's nothing like getting in the room. There's nothing like that one on one communication. So one thing I always suggest here is go get out of your house, put some lipstick on, some eye, some mascara, put your hair in a ponytail, put on something and get out the house. Y'all have no idea how much, how many people I meet just from being out and about. It could be somebody at, at home, <laughs> the cashier. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm talking to people because I love what I do. And I know that I have a solution for problems in this world. You get what I'm saying? Like, I know I have a solution. Just like y'all know you have a problem. You have a solution for people's problems. I hope y'all know what the problems are. OK. And I hope you know what your solution is. Because when that person asks you what you do, because you're buying something for something, right? So start a conversation. When they ask you what you do, don't tell them, oh, I'm a realtor. 
Don't tell them, oh, I'm a life insurance. No, you tell them the, the solution you saw, right? We know that, right? Um, anywhere in the world. But also be very intentional about stepping outside of spaces that you may not normally go to. Like, I know y'all have heard about going to the golf course. I know y'all have heard about going to cigar lounges. I know you guys have heard about getting in spaces and in rooms with people that don't look like us. I know y'all heard it, but how many of you guys are actually doing it? It, I guarantee you it will make a difference in your life. We can't be shy. We have a solution. We have well, there's problems out there that need to be solved and there's money out there that we could be making. Right. We don't have to be struggling. We don't have to be trying to figure this out. All we have to do is be intentional and step outside of what's comfortable. Now, yes, I know I do my masterminds in my house, but I'll go to a mastermind in a minute, honey. Okay. You better believe it, honey. I will. Where are we going? Costa Rica. Let, who gonna be there? Oh, phew. let me pack my suitcase. It's already pre-packed. <laughs> that suitcase is pre-packed, honey. Ready to go? I'm ready to go. Where are we going? Um, because you got to get in those rooms. Another frustration that people are having, too, is low conversion rates from offline marketing efforts. So what happens is uh, one lady I was talking to um, I actually met her at an event that I just spoke at and I did a brand exam for her. And she said that she needs a team to book her speaking engagements for her because she don't like, somebody told her no. She got one no. She was like, now, she said, I couldn't believe they told me no because I know she, she deserves to be there, but they told her no. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so she stopped, right? She stopped her offline efforts because of that no. And many people don't even start because of they're fearful of those no's, right? So you have to say, okay, let me go ahead and bet on that I'm about to get 50 no's real quick, right? Like go into it knowing, but actually from each of those 50 no's, write down, what did I learn from this? What mistake did I make? Were they not the right person? Were they not, did I, did I introduce myself wrong? Why didn't they return my email? What was it? Maybe it's because you didn't follow up. Well, I, I sent out emails and nobody responded back. Did you, did you follow up? <laughs> yes, pick up the phone. I'm telling you, my friend Isaiah Washington, y'all may know him. He is an actor, very handsome man, very good friend of mine. He said, Ari, you know what I love doing business with you? Because you actually pick up the phone and call me to ask me to come speak at your event. He said, don't nobody do that no more. They want to send an email. They want to text you. They want to DM you. You ask them if they got time to talk. They'd be like, well, nah. He said, but you actually called me. People, especially older people, they like to have conversation, right? They like, I love, I can make a phone call in a minute. You either not going to, you either not going to pick up or you going to tell me no. And I'm going to learn something from that. So each of those 50 no's like already get in your mind. And then when that 25, that 20, that 25th person say yes, guess what? It's going to empower you to keep do, reaching out to that, that, all, those offline e efforts. That good? Yes. Okay. Good? Yes. Okay. Some other desires that entrepreneurs are having um, in the space of um, um, offline is developing strong, high value offline client relationships. I can't stress enough the power of a good relationship. And let me tell you some ways to build relationships. It's really kind of, what's the word? Uh, what's the word? Give me the word, y'all. Um, make sense or comment or uh, easy. I don't know the word. I can't think of the word. <laughs> but it's just, what's the word? I can't think of it. But, um uh, I guess I'm trying to say common, uh, but have integrity. Do what you say you're going to do. Don't owe nobody no money. <laughs> um, follow through. You know what I'm saying? Overserve, over deliver. Another good way that I've been able to build some really good relationships is giving and serving. You know, one of my clients, she wanted to work with one of these people last year at um, InvestFest because InvestFest has a lot of influential people at InvestFest. I go every year. I didn't go this year. I just donated some tickets. But um, she was somebody was going to be there and she wanted to meet. I said, reach out to him 
and ask him, does he, that you live here in Atlanta, you see that he's coming in town and you've taken his course and you learn this from him and you're so grateful for him. And you know, everybody like to be patted on the back, right? Everybody wants to know that what they're putting out into the world is appreciated, right? Tell him, thank him. And then tell him that you're willing to serve him. You're willing to pick him up from the airport or provide car service for him or support him at, behind the scenes at, at the event. If it's, a, if it's a lady, hey, I have a good makeup artist for you. Let me get my, you don't want to come out here now. These, some of these Atlanta makeup artists now, chat. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Offer your services. Serve. Do you know that now she works for him? Well, with him? Wow. She works with him now? She's about to move to Atlanta? You understand what I'm saying? And he is super crazy successful. So, so we don't think like, we think, oh, I'm just going to follow him on social media and buy his course and buy his book and I'm just going to like him from afar or her from afar. Uh-uh. You better figure out, let me arrange car service for you. I got the perfect car service company for you. Right? And you be, it's you. <laughs> no, just, something, like something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you pull up like, hey! tell you that it was that it was gonna be me and, and my little mercedes 300 you know what i'm saying come on get on in and get yourself in the trunk <laughs> right but it works because these people are probably used to somebody always wants something from them one of the reasons why me and Stedman Graham have such a really good relationship is because I'm, i send him business i be booking him for speaking engagement because i know that's all he wants to do he wants to get out and share his message you know what I'm saying? I don't need nothing, but eventually I get something from it, but I didn't need nothing from it. I saw my client was hosting an event. Ooh, Stephanie would be good. Let me, let me introduce y'all. He get his little change. She get to promote him at her, her event. Win, win, win. You know what I mean? You gotta, the best way to build a relationship with somebody, bring them some money. <laughs> bring them some money or provide a service for them for free. Okay. A lot of times uh, we don't always have, I said this at an event I speak at, um, we don't always have to get paid for what we do. You know what I mean? We don't always have to get paid uh, because when you have the right relationship, a lot of times, um, I say this a lot, but you could be broke tomorrow, today, but with the right, right relationship, you could be rich tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to remember what you did. Batteries low. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take a pause for the call. Okay, all right, who has a question? So I have a question. Okay. Um, so in the entrepreneurial space, um, I have learned, um, especially in our community, we don't have that tight-knit um, kind of like networking. I refer people to you, you refer people to me. Majority of the time, um, when I'm trying to set up business partners and things of that nature, People will ask me, so what What can you provide to me? Money-wise. Mm. And in the insurance space, it's heavily, heavily regulated. Yes. Um, and so it's like a lot of eyeballs. So yeah. if anything, like if you refer somebody to me and I say, no, I am, I'm just going to mail you a 250 check. Mm -hmm. that, that it's against the regulations. Policy. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So how can you kind of combat that and kind of, you know, come around, you know, people asking for money for referrals. Mm, that's good. Let me think of what's worked for one of my clients and one of my friends. Um, hmm. Because my husband asked about that because I refer my life insurance agent to everybody. He'd be like, you ain't get nothing from it. Um, and I'm like, well, yes, because of the relationship that I have with him. Um... He creates opportunities for me too. Like he had me, when I say I send everybody to him, I do. Um, but it's because he adds so much value to them and to me, I don't mind doing it without wanting something. So look at what type of value you can add to them first before the pitch or the thing about a referral. Number one, like value, 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 value. 
and then ask. Um, you know, they, they say, please them, tease them, and then pitch them, right? Um, so that, um, but then he creates so much opportunity for me as well. So look at maybe, and maybe it's a type of genre of people that you can put on your power list that you can, that you're like, Ooh, they're tapped into people who can really utilize my services and figure out what type of opportunity you can create for them. Right. And then, like I was just saying with step men and like the late, my girl, my client who reached out to the guy, I'll I be trying so hard not to say his name. Cause y'all know him <laughs> and uh, everybody knows who he is. Um, and so, um, yeah, so do that. It's all about adding value, okay. value, 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 service, serve, 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 and then ask. Like, don't come with the ask first without adding the value. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Good question. What other question y'all got? Good question. Okay, now don't, now, <laughs> come on now. Don't be asking, don't be, don't be acting shy now. <laughs> so my question is, as a woman who wears a mini hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I feel after taking your mastermind course and mm -hmm. everything that I've narrowed it down um, Good. and honed into um, my area of expertise, my spiritual gifts and things of that nature. Good. Um, however, a question that I have and also that others come to me about is how or where do you really start with um, managing and, and, and I know creating your brand is really big, mm -hmm. but for instance, some of my hats that I wear are totally different. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Two different so, audiences. Correct. Mm -hmm. Four, five different audiences. Yeah. Okay. So how, you know, do you successfully do that? You're going to have to let some something go mm -hmm. or create one or two of those that you can scale mm -hmm. or that can run without you. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Most definitely. That's pretty yeah. much what I've done. Okay. I just want to be sure. Yeah. I'm on the right. Because it's kind of mm -hmm. challenging sometimes when you... you because it's your brand you know. and you created it. But... What we have to know as entrepreneurs is that we are creating entities, not jobs for ourselves. Okay. So when I went into my book publishing company, that was the goal. I don't want to do this forever. It was, it was cool and it made a lot of money, but this ain't what I, I this is too much. So I created, I hired someone that could duplicate me and literally do what I do so that the business can run without me. And that's what we, that's the mindset we need as entrepreneurs. Yeah, it's okay to create this company and this business and this thing and have this audience, but set it up from the beginning to where you are, the systems, operation manual, like everything is in place so that it can run without you. You get what I'm saying? And a lot of, a lot of successful entrepreneurs do that. You don't have to have your hand on it, but then sometimes you may have to let something go, but there are also ways where you can mirror them as well, uh, because I am seriously considering I did getting my life insurance license because I'm teaching people how to make money. Why wouldn't I get into some kind of fine, even though I know it's not financial, but it is financial, right? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. Why wouldn't I get into that space as well? Even if I just refer somebody, <laughs> I got to have a license to refer somebody, um, travel, you know, I, I, I just enrolled with the travel. I already have my own. I'm already a travel agent because I do mastermind retreats internationally, but you see how I'm mastermind. I merged it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so now it's like, okay, when I do these mastermind retreats, I can go all across the world and host these masterminds for South Africans, Tanz Tan people from Tanzania. I don't know what they call themselves. Tanzanians, maybe. Um, and people in Costa Rica. And they can buy into my international travel business. You see? So you can merge them too, but you got to really like see how that works. So a lot of time when we're creating, because we all have a lot of gifts, you have a lot of gifts and talents that God has blessed you with. But sometimes when we're starting businesses, we got to go into that business at the beginning. How can this work for the overall revenue wheel? Revenue wheel or the tree, the branch to where it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. But you're on the right track. Yeah, but scale, 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 scale. Scaling is basically finding some people, hiring people that can do what you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? That can duplicate you. Because most of these companies that, what is it, um, the Walton family, 
Mm-hmm. No, nobody with that last name works at Walmart. Okay. <laughs> they not even the C-suite. They not, they not training nobody. They, you get what I'm saying? But entrepreneurs, especially uh, uh, black entrepreneurs, we don't think like that. We think about creating another job creating another our businesses are jobs if you think about it you get what i'm saying like my husband be like dang did you work he be getting on my nerves too (laughs) baby did you work today (laughs) i'm like i didn't i set up my company so i don't have to work he's like what you do today i sat outside and smoked two cigars (laughs) and watched about two or three podcasts Mm -hmm. on a wednesday Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but i uh I think like a corporation, not as an employee of my business. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes we got to go into the mind frame like that, too. Mm-hmm. And don't put so much on your plate. Okay. <laughs> I know we feel like we can handle it, but sometimes we don't need to give it to somebody else to handle. And I know that's not always easy, but it's doable. It's definitely doable. Yeah. Okay. One more question. Yes. So, I am into social media. Mm -hmm. I love social media. Me too. I do. And as a a life coach, someone said something to me and it really hurt my feelings. And they said, oh my gosh, everybody is a life coach now. Mm -hmm. What makes you so different? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And... I was just like, <laughs> and then I was like, no, I'm going to send her a video. Okay. Like, I'm going to pin this up. She this. asked you or she asked a group of people? No, she asked me. Oh, she asked you. Good. Co- yeah, but it's a good question, though. It's a good question. And so I thought about it, and I was just like, 10 years ago, life coaching was not what it is now. You're right. And we only had like Lisa Nichols. Les Brown really is. Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. Even Mel Robbins wasn't who she is today back then. Right. Um, E.T. wasn't where he is now. Lisa was literally doing her thing. Her and maybe, I don't even know because I'm about my life. It wasn't that many people. Right. And so I started thinking about it like, what makes me so special? Right? And so at first it stung because I was like, well, how dare you say that? <laughs> Then it stung again because I really wasn't sure what made me special. Okay. And I'm just keeping it real. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I think the truth really will. But you're not the only one. You ain't the only one. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. And so my question is, how do I answer that question? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I love, I love it. I ask the same question to my clients, child. <laughs> I say my thing is what makes, what makes the, sur- the solution that you bring to the, to the marketplace new, okay. better, or different? Mm. New, better, or different, right? So that's a question we can ask ourselves. What, what is it about my solution that, that is new, better, or different? So there's lots of, there's lots of, of of answers to that question but mainly is you have to what i call y'all y'all who have been to my master i know it's your guru isms right that's a word i need to trademark it i still haven't trademarked it (laughs) but i will now make it new different a new better or different right so it's your guru isms right your guru isms are that those things that are specifically unique to you that can't nobody say they they have done so would that be part of my process? Not at all. Well, maybe. My methodology? Maybe. So here's an, there's several examples, but here's one. Um, guruism basically is what I talk, you got to get my book, Become a High Value Brand, if you haven't already, but I talk about it in my book. But it's basically what, what have you done specifically? Because I'm going to give you an example because I give this example all the time. My client, um, Tamikia Brayboy. Tamikia, T-I-M-E-K-I-A. Follow her on social media. You're going to learn a lot from her. T-I-M-E-K-I-A. See how I'm always shouting out my clients? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, <clears throat> Tamikia Brayboy. Tamikia Rochelle. Rochelle on social media. R A 
S-H-E-L-L, Tamikia. She is a holistic, she does um, yoni, yoni steam, steaming, and she's very, she's getting her certification for Chinese medicine. Like, so anyway, for her, her thing, so I started asking her, well, tell me a little bit about you, you know, what type of success are your clients having? You know, just kind of break it down. We sat right there at that table at my other, my other house, and she just started telling me all this stuff, and I'm writing it down. I'm just writing all this stuff that she didn't think that she was the bomb at. And so one of her guruisms that she has helped or ushered, her word, because we don't like to use the word help because we're not the help. Um, we're not the savior, right? Uh, we're not here to save people. <laughs> we're here to guide them, support them, usher them into whatever their next level is or their transformation. Transformation. Um, but she has ushered at that time 39 women from infertility, infertility to pre full-blown pregnancies to having babies through her, practice. through her program, through her practices, through her strategies, through her techniques. That's a guruism. What makes you different? Had 39 <laughs> women who couldn't have babies ask me again. Excuse my language. But, but I'm just saying, ask me again, right? I do my, through, you understand what I'm saying? So do that. Go through and write down and see that's only specific to her. Can't nobody else, maybe somebody way in Thailand somewhere, it'll be 39 people. You get what I'm saying? But see, that's unique to her. Um, so that's a guruism. Um, another guruism is I have personally been trained by so and so. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Guruism. Everybody can't say that. You understand what I'm saying? So it is your process in your kind of, kind of. Let me just let, can I say this about process? Okay. Um, I hate when people promote their process Okay. because no one's buying your process. They're the solution. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't care about your process. If you were to work with me and I was your brand manager, you don't care what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Long as we do, long as we get to the, to whatever result we going to get to. <laughs> Am I right? Mm -hmm. If I hire you as my attorney, all I want to know is that you're going to make sure that I don't get you. Yeah. That's it. And I'm going to buy the property, the land or whatever, and I'm going to win. I don't care how many paper, how many forms I got to fill out. I don't care who you got to call. I don't care about the process. So please, Linda, don't get caught up in the process. So, but when I say the process, it's not like I'm going to lead with the process. Okay, good. But the result will come from, from the process. process. Mm -hmm. But, but. Sometimes you don't even need to talk about the process because the process scares people. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So this, because it's this work. What I'm going, what this benefit. I'm going to be able to do as a result of work. That part. Okay. That part. Gotcha. Le always lead with that because the process scares people. You know why? Because it's work. Yeah. And most people don't like work, right, Amari? <laughs> I tell him he don't like work. My son don't like no work. He just like me. Uh, <laughs> but most people, it scares people. They don't want, they don't want, they don't. But I know you created that process. It's yours. It's uniquely yours. It's, it's all great. I've shared with you guys so many success stories about my clients. I haven't necessarily shared the process. You're, well, yes, I have. I have. I share some techniques. Yeah, I share some techniques. Yeah. Okay, good question. Was that good? I don't know. Good, 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 good. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna move on.